Hi right, guys, this is Breaker, and it looks like we got, um, wait a minute, this can't be right, hold on just a second, okay, I'm thinking, okay, no, 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 this is, this is perfectly alright, I'll get back to this in just a minute, let me go ahead and introduce both players, um, spawning as our Zerg in the lower left hand corner, he's a member of EXE, and, uh, he's one of the few GMs that we have. I give you none other than EXE's very own Hephaestus. In the upper right hand corner, I believe hailing from Russia, if not one of the Slavic language speaking areas. I give you none other than Roxkis Pomi. Now, if this is the same, you know, uh, if he, assuming that he wears the same tag on the NA server, I don't believe I've had the pleasure of casting him. It could, you know, I mean, I'm trying to think of other Protoss players that are member of that are members of Roxkis. The first one that comes to mind is Roxkis Fryer, but even then, I cannot be too sure that it is him. Um, of course, we see that basically on the EU server, players use different tags than they would from the NA server, and uh, Hephaestus is no exception. Look here, he's got USA in his name, but I, that leads me to believe that he's actually. Um, playing on the on the EU server for starters and uh, secondly when we were loading up this replay he was not GM so I'm thinking maybe he was Grandmasters on the uh, North American server. And this is uh, a very bold opener that we have from Hephaestus. He actually goes for a double hatch opening first. Single gas going down already for Roxkis Pomi. Um, only two probes are on that gas. I wonder if this is intentional. It was taken earlier than usual, I think we would see. Um, so this leads me to believe that, you know, and this is quite interesting that we see a cybernetic score. You know, he's not opting for that Forge Fast Expand opener. Um, doesn't want to make that SimCity first, so I'm a little curious as to just what this is all about. Two probes on gas. I'm, you know, maybe this is a mistake, but who knows. We all make them. Now there's three on gas. Um, let's just wait and see where things go from here. But yeah, on a side note, if you guys like a white guy that can cast in Chinese, I will be casting the uh, Ritmix RSL tomorrow. That would be Tuesday, the 26th of March at, let me see here, I have to think. Mm. It will be 11 o'clock Taipei time, 11 o'clock Beijing time. So that would be about 10 o'clock central time, 1600, um, try to think here, 1600 central European time. We do have gateway tech in production presently. And we also have four links that are out on the map and uh, ooh. But the Zealot here is forcing these Lings to basically be used a little more defensively. Um, so I don't think we're going to see them rush too quickly to actually get to the uh, natural. This is kind of, I don't know, this is just kind of tripping him up just a bit. Um, Hephaestus knows that there's a Nexus down now, so you should know that this is not an all-in by any means. This is basically some kind of a pressure into an expo. Both queens, I believe, were pulled. Um, I also know that it is very common for Hef to go for a three queen opener and this is a uh, quite interesting he's actually going for double gas hasn't taken a third uh, have I ever told you guys the definition of insanity double gas in the main for our Protoss um, I want to say that uh, Basically on a double gas, this can lead to ling opener, or excuse me, um, not, not a ling opener, but uh, I'm trying to think, two base mutalisk openers, this is actually rather valid, it gives a, per it gives a zerg valid map control, um, and there's the layer type going down right now, before metabolic boost I might add. And this is indicative of other play, basically uh, Nidus Olins, if you will. And I want to say that, given the fact that this was not a Forge Fast Expand, that's an early-ish third gas, 
I want to say that this can lead to Stargate openers. Um, if not, just a kind of a pressure play, if you will. We do have three gateways. Excuse me, three warp gates. Uh, two and a half warp gates. We're waiting for this one to get turned into one. And there's the definitive tech that I was looking for. Twilight Council going down right now. I have never seen an actual timing build like this. Typically, if you're going to go Forge Fast, expand into a Twilight Council. Um, you want to have both gases by about the 6 minute 30 second mark. No, actually even earlier than that. Maybe 6 minutes and 15 seconds. Lean down here at the third right next to it. Just making sure that we don't have uh, Protoss trying to rapidly expand, which will be the case. And a hallucinated phoenix getting ready to move out for Roxkiss Pommy. Definitely wants to get a read on just what we see from Hephaestus, but meanwhile, there's a Nidus and an infestation pit in production. So the question is, is the phoenix going to see both of these pieces of tech or just one? There we go, the phoenix is going by. It saw something else in production over here. I don't believe he clicked on it. I don't think he had the chance to click on it. So for all um, Pommy could know, this could actually just really be uh, an evolution chamber, and that's about it. But here we go, that typical-ish kind of all-in play from uh, from Hephaestus. I don't know, I kind of wish that I wasn't seeing this. Eh. But then again, it looks rather valid. It's trending at the Master's level. Um, queens are already out, but where are the Swarm Hosts? We only have one in production presently, two in the Nidus Worm. And I know now that uh, Roxkiss knows, Roxkiss Pommy knows that something is definitely up. Alright, so those Sormos have not burrowed yet, so one, two of them are in hot water. This transfuse is going down. They haven't burrowed. That's the most critical part about this. They can only let their locusts out once they have burrowed. And I don't think Enduring Locust has been researched. Let's go back here and check. It has not been. So this is going to make the forward pressure that we see coming from Hephaestus just a little lackluster. We do have Photon Overcharge going on in the Nexus here, so that's going to kind of help... Um, it's going to kind of help Roxkiss Pommy hold his ground a little bit longer versus Hephaestus. He's probably trying this with a new variant without the Enduring Locust and using the gas that he's saving instead to crank out more Swarm Hosts. The big problem is um, trying to get an Enduring Attack out with the, without the Enduring Locust because, I can, as you can see, they have quite the limited lifespan. And the only way to compensate for that is getting the Locust out closer and closer and closer to the base of Protoss. Meanwhile, we have Protoss' forces building. We have cannons going down in defensive positions, but, you know, they're, they're kind of on borrowed time because once this pylon falls right here, we will see, uh, basically, Pommy's going to be in a rough spot. The queens are here, transfusing themselves. As far as I know, there is no observer here. There's not even one out on the map. There's no detection at all. Forward creep tumor being attacked. Oh, and now we have the... Okay, the observer's right here, but it looks like it just can't do enough damage. And um, right now we have Pommy opting for a counterattack. Is how many, how many forward spine crawlers does Hef have? He only has three, and they're supposed to basically hold their ground against all these stalkers which I believe have Blink, yes they do, and we could end up seeing a basically a base trait scenario. Photon Cannon 1 goes down, Photon Overcharge is activated on the Nexus, Mothership has about 17 energy, B aggressive Blink forward from the Stalkers, we're going to have to see the Queens transfusing these Spine Crawlers, two transfuses go down and now Slowlings are coming in to reinforce this, this is a good temporary solution while these two Spine Crawlers finish up, and you know, this attack is just getting more and more deadly. We actually see the Locusts moving in to kill probes. This is actually, you know, causing a lot of damage to Palmy. His income is now slightly lower than that of Zerg. The Observer is here and can see everything. And right now we have to see Palmy pull his probes off the line. There was an aggressive blink forward. It looks like they didn't want to deal with these at all. And now the Nidus Worm has been shut down. This doesn't, however, stop creep spread or what's happening now. And we see, oh my god, this is actually working a little bit in favor of Roxas Pommy. The only problem we're going to have is, will he be able to save his main while, his, uh, while he destroys the main of Hephaestus? You know, these stalkers are actually going up against these locusts. They're not being microed, they're just now being checked up on. 
but we have to see him be willing to pull them back. He has to know how to micro them. They outspeed locusts so easily. They can just run away from them, if I'm not mistaken. Well, not off creep, but definitely... Not on creep, but definitely off creep. Oh my god, and now we have more and more stalkers coming in for some forward momentum. You know, Pommy is really trying to destroy this, but there's just... You know, he's just... This is such a bad point to engage. And that's all the stalkers that are left from Hephaestus. Or, excuse me, from uh, Pommy. And now it's a 36 supply Protoss versus a 113 supply Zerg. Hephaestus was just now pushing up into the main. And um, at that point, we see Roxkiss Pommy call out GG. So if you guys liked what you saw here, just go ahead and click on that subscribe button. It should have been glowing um, on the right side of your screen this entire game. This has been Breaker. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and add me as a friend on Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash breakersd2. I also have Twitch. That's twitch.tv forward slash enders116. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.